Joining me now to discuss all this is Roya Rahmani, who for the past two and a half years was Afghanistan's first female ambassador to the United States. She now lives in Washington, D.C. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. What is your reaction to this news coming out of Kabul at this moment? How do you feel tonight? Thank you. I feel betrayed. I feel in loss. I feel hopeless. I feel very disappointed. And most importantly, it's just hard to pull it together and collect your trust again. That's how I feel. Are you surprised by the speed with which the Afghan government and security forces have yielded to the Taliban, your former boss, your former mentor, President Ashraf Ghani, fleeing from the country this morning after saying yesterday that he was mobilizing? Isn't it a savage indictment of just how tenuous your government's control on this country was, sadly? Absolutely right. I am not surprised, though. I was not surprised because once I learned that uh, at the several week, when several weeks ago, our security forces were not able to carry on and, and defend the country because they were uh, left dry, hanging there without any support, uh, not receiving uh, any support from Kabul. And then later on, receiving orders when they were in the front line of the fight not to fight and back off and hand over, of course, there was something bigger going on. I was also very disappointed to see that the uh, first, one of the first flights evacuating people evacuated those who took us to this very day today. And before you joined public service, you, of course, worked on human rights, women's empowerment. In a 2019 interview with Foreign Policy magazine, you said the women and young people of Afghanistan, quote, are not willing to give up their rights. They are not willing to compromise their human rights and go back to the old days. Obviously, tragically, that isn't turning out to be the case. The old days seem to be back. So what happens to those women and young people now that we have reports of the Taliban already sending working women home? Yes, the I said it then, and I am saying it again. They, they didn't want to. They are forced. It is once again, uh, Afghan people are imposed. They, uh, uh, their fate has been imposed to them. They do not have a role in charting it. They do not have agency over it. And uh, the most vulnerable of this group are women. Women empowerment was the most real and tangible achievement of the international community's intervention over the past 20 years. And yet, unfortunately, also the most vulnerable one because of a variety yes. of reasons, mostly local and domestic. But I want to also say that, that the best indicator to what happens in Afghanistan moving forward is what happens to its women. What happens to its women is yes. telling you what happens to Afghanistan. I have to ask about the extent to which corruption or the perception of corruption in the Afghan government has helped the Taliban cause. You yourself were accused by Afghan media of corruption last year over the cost of a security barrier that was built at the Afghan embassy in Washington, D.C. Allegations that you and the embassy have said are baseless. But the Washington Post's Afghanistan Papers investigation shows that elsewhere, bribery, graft, financial corruption were persistent problems inside of your country. Did that help the Taliban take over the country? Your government's brazen and often massive corruption. Wasn't that the big boost to the Taliban? Absolutely. One of the biggest reason of the, our failure today is corruption. Is, is just this inflamed uh, corruption that really ate up everything. I was accused, of course, because uh, it was mostly my own passion and dedication which became my liability. And, and it was more of the, the leadership, the problems that we had in the leadership and the discrimination and much more. But 
what have uh, you, you probably have seen the Washington Post article uh, about a few weeks ago too that that really did a thorough investigation of what happened and, and wrote about it and and why I was accused. But the reality is, I guess what took us today is lack of accountability, lack of a functional justice system, lack of rule of law, and also the international community. So I, I, guess, to it. I guess corruption is so systemic. Corruption is so systemic and widespread in Afghanistan. Ordinary Afghans don't know who to believe or who to trust on whichever side of the political divide. That's the problem uh, in Afghanistan. One last quick question before I let you go. You, you're not just a public official, public figure. You were born in Afghanistan right before the Soviet invasion, uh, at the beginning of four decades of violent instability. You were a, a rights activist. You worked for NGOs. You obviously have a big network of friends, colleagues, family back at home. How are they? What are they saying to you? How worried are you for them? I'm extremely worried. They are stranded. They are confused. They, uh, uh, as you pointed out earlier, there is no money in the banks. Uh, they don't know what the future will hold for them. They are just hopeless. And, and I don't think that they even feel that. They are just struggling right now and hoping to make it to the next day. That is the status right now. It is truly tragic. Former Ambassador Roy Romani, thank you so much for your time tonight and for your insights. Appreciate it.